Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. It's episode number 24, and it's also the season and series finale as we take on, well, Arsenal in the final game of the Premier League, which of course means absolutely nothing now, apart from who finishes third and who finishes fourth, and our first cup final of the save as we face Liverpool at Wembley. Um, I'm going to simulate the Arsenal game because, again, it really does count for absolutely nothing. I don't care whether it's a third or fourth place finish. All we wanted this season was Champions League football for next year and a trophy as well. We've got one and now we're going for the other today as well. So you can simulate this game uh, real quickly. Uh, some of you guys have been asking what's my favourite sort of new feature uh, in this year's FIFA. Something I, I really do like a lot is the um, the sim and the quick sim options. So if you sim the game, for example, you can see, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you can see like a, a 2D representation of what's going on in the game. And you can jump in and play the game if you'd like to do so as well. I've not done it for any of the saves I've done so far in uh, in FIFA for YouTube, but they are, it is a really, really cool feature. I've tried it myself sort of in a, a personal save and it's it's really cool. And eventually when it loads, I'll show you what I mean. It's taking a while to load because it shows you the lineups first. But wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. Hold on. Hey, there we go. So right, there we are. And uh, yeah, you can see that the 2D screen of what's going on. And if you want to do so, um, during the game, at any point, literally at any point you want, you can press the square button and you jump into the game. It's it's really, really cool. And I mean, I, you know, I, I sometimes can come under fire for being a little bit too critical of EA. But as I always say, I am very fair. Like, I genuinely am very, very fair indeed, so, yeah, um, it's it's kind of cool, and you go straight up to the sim as well when you pause it and watch the game again, and uh, if you don't want to see exactly what goes on, if you want, what you can do uh, is you can just go straight to the end of the game uh, by pressing the pause and then jump to result, and it will tell you exactly what happened, and in classic FIFA style, nothing happened in a golden straw, so... <laughs> <laughs> very realistic as well but it's um yeah it's it's a really cool feature and i've got to give props to ea for that it's probably the best part of fever 21 so far i think and um yeah i uh, i like it a lot so in the end we'll briefly before we do the FA Cup final i'll show you how the final premier league table looked we did indeed finish in third place with 81 points on the board 24 victories in our 38 games i think we're the third highest scorers in the division as well which is probably my favorite part of this season as well last season we had a ridiculously low amount of goals this year 73 in 38 mainly due to the goals of jimenez and sanchez as well uh, but liverpool did win the title they reclaimed it beating man city who won it last year by a single point us in third arsenal in fourth separated by goal different spurs finish in the fifth and guaranteed Europa League spot with Manchester United and Everton uh, most likely joining them in the Europa League. Chelsea in eighth, they were the underperformers this year in the bottom three were Leeds, Brentford and Swansea, though that was known for quite some time. Swansea going down with a record low amount of points. So yes, today we have the FA Cup final uh, against Liverpool. It is of course going to be a live game, my first one of the series. I was thinking about doing a, a live Q&A, but I just thought, nah, I can't be bothered to be honest. So just going to do a regular live highlights game. And hopefully you'll enjoy, you know, throughout the course of the say we've been doing post-commentary uh, format. Um, as I talked about it before, I, I feel more comfortable uh, doing post-commentary. I just it's, it's what my channel was A, built on, and B, what I feel most natural doing. I feel very relaxed, and it's just nice just to chat with no need for any kind of reactionary stuff. Um, but, of course, I am... I don't even know who that is. Of course, I am uh, mindful of the fact that live commentary is um, is more popular now. It is more expected. And I've talked about on FIFA 21 for the PS5, I will be doing both a, a live series and a post-commentary series just to give everyone something they'll enjoy. Um, Jean Moutinho, though, he asked to play in the FA Cup semi-final and he got the assist for the only goal of the game. So I'm going to play him in the FA Cup final as well. I'm going to say, you set the standard. No, lead by example, Jean. Lead by example. And let's see if we can win our first trophy and our only trophy of this series as well. Won't bother with a press conference. Let's get straight into it. So for the lineup, let's quickly pick it here together. Stick with a 5 2 3 we played throughout the course of the series. Uh, Gazza is our cup goalkeeper, still come on. Uh, come in. Body's played a lot of our FA Cup games this year as well, I believe. And I will start Jao Moutinho ahead of Ruben Neves as well. No change to front three though. And I think we will go with 
for that. Yeah, no need for a major change. Let's just get straight to it. And just real briefly before we get into the game as well, uh, some of you guys have been asking me uh, what gameplay I'm, I'm doing this year, what kind of settings I'm doing with the gameplay. Um, it is legendary gameplay. You can tell that for every single game. Um, is it nice weather? Oh, it's overcast. I'm going to change it. But uh, I do legendary gameplay. It's on the fast, uh, fast speed, but it doesn't really make much of a difference to me. And as for the sliders as well, they're all default and they're all on 50. I haven't touched them throughout the course of the save, though I will say this in my PS5 career mode. I'm going to experiment with the slides a little bit to try and get more realistic gameplay featuring some injuries as well. And um, yeah, we'll uh, all sort of take it by uh, take it by game by game, I think. So yeah, let's dive into it and get to the lineups. So as you see in the intro, just real briefly, uh, I want to say thank you for all the support throughout the course of the series. Uh, it was always planned to be quite a uh, short-lived one, sort of a mini crew, if you will. Uh, but the support was really good, you guys seem to really enjoy it. First time I tried to keep things as realistically as I possibly can, of course it's very difficult to do that in FIFA career mode. But uh, yeah, you guys seem to really enjoy this save, I had a lot of fun with it as well in such a short space of time. And I'm really excited for the PS5 crew as well. Now, fingers crossed, touch wood, it will be beginning tomorrow morning, so around 11am UK time, possibly midday, is when I plan to have the first episode out. But based on tangible factors that I might not be able to, con uh, might not be able to control, um, it might possibly come out on the Sunday or the Monday, but I'm definitely hoping for tomorrow. Uh, if you want uh, confirmed updates, then follow me on Twitter. There's a link to my Twitter in every single description of every single video I do, and uh, I'll be able to give you more updates there. So, let's do it then. FA Cup Final against Liverpool, going for our first and only piece of silver to save. Come on, Wolves, let's end the series off with a trophy. Oh, Rafa, run round, run round, there we go. Right round the back of Trent. And this guy is so quick, but as is Alexander-Arnold. Quick little turn, stays on his feet. Oh, you are joking. You are joking. I mean, seriously, six minutes in. You know the saying, luck will balance itself out. But you know what? I don't want that. I don't want that. Rafa trying to turn Trent. How on earth? Jürgen, I'm not going to lie, mate. I'm sharing your reaction. Do you know what? This is something I used to do in the very old days on my channel. And whenever we got a debatable penalty, we would always chip it down the middle. This is more than debatable. That is just downright bizarre. I'm going to do it though. Chip it down the middle for Raul Jimenez. If it goes in, it goes in. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's Jimenez. Oh, he scores. And I kind of didn't want to. Oh, at least showed the respect, if nothing else. Man, oh man. I can't believe that. Seven minutes in, we lead. And I, I feel terrible. Jimenez with the long, stuttering run up, dinks it down the middle to beat Allison with a Penenka. But that was never, ever a penalty. Was there contact? Absolutely. Was there much of it? No way. And it certainly wasn't justifiable in my opinion. Shocking decision. We're going to chalk that up to VAR. And I might be celebrating on the sidelines like that, but believe me, I'm not doing that with my controller at all. That's, that's poor refereeing. It's kind of funny because in the very old days of my channel, um, I would either dink penalties down the middle like that and you know if they went in they went in if they didn't they didn't or I would just intentionally miss them if I thought they were incorrectly given um, people really didn't like it when I did that though like they 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 I don't know why like it's, it's kind of weird because like at first people thought it was quite fair but then I started getting a lot of comments telling me that what I was doing was sort of wrong if you will intentionally missing penalties like that and it sort of broke up realism and I, I do kind of get that but it just feels a bit like, you know, realistically, with that penalty being given in real life, or well, maybe this year with VAR, right, possibly. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I think chipping down the middle is about as fair as I can make it, really, without getting too many complaints. Sanchez, Jimenez. Oh, I should have kept going with shot on the left foot. Still 1-0, but a great start here. Jimenez to Moutinho. Sanchez. Moutinho. Oh, good cutout. Oh! Oh, not a terrible refereeing decision, but a huge stroke of fortune. And you know that saying, luck will balance itself out. We've had some really unfortunate moments throughout the course of this season, but we've got a huge helping hand in the biggest of games. Oh my word. I think that was your raise clearance deflecting off Fabinho on the turf and Raul Jimenez, man. Too good, too, too composed, and too deadly. 2 0 Wolves, both for Raul, but two of the easiest goals he'll score in his career. Well, it's just one of those games where you know the FIFA gods are smiling on you, no doubt about that. Come Liverpool looking for the response though. Firmino, 2 1. 
Reds back in the game. Nothing lucky or unlucky or debatable like that goal. Just a lovely little free ball and a Brazilian fires it in. 2-1. Deficit halved immediately. Fantastic first half. That is probably going to do it for the first half. And a very action-packed first half as well. And to be honest here, I'm kind of glad Liverpool found a goal back in the first half. Because they definitely deserved it after a ridiculously unfortunate first couple of goals for us. Anyway, half-time, leading by a goal. That man, unstoppable as ever. Best striker in England right now. That man's been beaten twice. Not much he could have done about either, though. 45 minutes to go, but the game, far from over. And Liverpool are dominating possession at the moment. They were 70% of it. But only the one shot, and it found the back of the net. This is a, a, a typical FIFA 21 AI game. But do you know what? It's it's okay for me because at the moment I'm not feeling that much pressure. You know they, they can have as much of the ball they want. If not doing anything with it, that's fine by me. And is Moutinho plays a lovely ball to Traore in behind the back line. This could and should be free, and it is nothing lucky or debatable. Right, that goal to a lovely ball by Zhao, the veteran signing off with an assist. Like he got in the cup semi-final and Traore this season's been superb. He's added goals to his game as well as assists and that's a brilliant finish from a tired angle as well. Just waited and waited and waited for Milner to come across. Once he did, quick little through ball. Traore is speedy Spaniel. 1-1 one -one with Alisson. Beat him for the third time. And for this goal, you can't say I got any luck. It was just quite a simple little through ball run and finish. 3-1, two goal cushion restored and I think the trophy's going to be ours now. Game not over yet though, and here come Liverpool again, and again, they've scored, that's only their second shot of the game, and they've scored again from it, Firmino going all the way back to his own half, and it's 3-2, quick little 1-2 with, I think it was Sadio Mane from Sabitza, nice ball to cross, and Firmino with the finish, puts the Reds again, within one, and again, this game kind of sums up, FIBA 21 for me as Moutinho is off now for the final time in his career, like, seriously, the AI dominate possession, they don't do much with it. But when they have a shot, nine times out of, out of ten they score from it. It's 3-2, there's 14 minutes to go. I thought that Traore goal was going to kill off the contest, but instead, it's not over yet. Traore. Semedo. Traore. Jimenez for match ball. Oh! <laughs> you know, I've got to say, this is my final game of FIFA on the PS4 and what a way to close out the era of this console as well. 4-2, a hat-trick for Rao and, and this game kind of sums up the whole series as well. Jimenez being unstoppable, flare goals being incredibly common, super debatable, refereeing decisions, moments of luck and fortune and well what a fantastic game to end my FIFA era on the PS4. Jimenez wraps it up, surely now that's going to do it. 4-2 should be the final score. And it's once again Raul being unstoppable. That should do it now, surely. I don't think I could have asked for a better and more dramatic closeout game. Oh! Oh! What's that? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. It's just the final whistle, mate. It's nothing to show you. Oh, is it offside? <laughs> Never mind. Jump the gun. It's offside. I don't think I'm going to ask for a better game to close out my era of gaming on the PS4 because, of course, the PS5 now has FIFA 21 available to download for it. And I am officially done. And this is a great way to close it out as well. Really, really enjoyable game. Really enjoyable little mini series as well. And yeah, I'm officially done with PS4 with all the saves I did on the PS4. So many amazing series I managed to produce for social media. I've got to be honest, I, I really enjoyed this one as a little mini closeout one, but so many awesome series produced on this console, which I've just tapped and it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's sitting under my desk right now. I've, I've had so much fun producing content on this console. I've had such a great journey uh, on social media with this console as well. And um, so, you know, starting off with my uh, with my Millwall save back in 2000, and was it 13 when the console came out? 2013 or 2014? I can't remember now. But I, I did that career mode first. It was the first career mode I did on the console, and well, it was the start of a, a load, a catalogue, a fantastic uh, series, both in this game mode and other game modes, and certain unique challenge and time-based series as well. Uh, and just loads of different content created with the console as well 
it was really, really enjoyable from start to finish. And it's bowing out with a, a crazy game to remember, the 4-2 thriller at Wembley here for our first trophy to save in uh, my first sort of main career mode of the FIFA year as well. Uh, this PS4 has really served me well, man. I've had some great memories playing games on it, and um, it's it's been great, man. I've really, really enjoyed it. And a lovely way to close out as well, because it's officially done for me, this console now as well. Like, as soon as I quit this game, after I've, you know, finished recording this game, um, as soon as I quit this game, excuse me, I'm going to um, delete all the apps on it, all my storage data, all my login info, all my uh, media apps as well. Um, and I am going to box it up, and I'm going to sell it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, money is quite tight at the moment, not just for myself, but for everyone. Everyone's feeling a bit tight in, tight in the pocket at the moment due to the coronavirus pandemic, and I, I need to raise as much money as possible, really, of course, who doesn't right now, and be careful with the money. And, yeah, since I'm migrating from PS4 to PS5, this is it. This is the final game I will be playing, not just with FIFA, with any game, on the PS4, this is it. As soon as I quit FIFA, this is it. I say farewell to my console, but for the years of service it's given me, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant catalogue of saves and series I've produced using this console. And what a way to bow out as well with a 4-2 victory at Wembley for our first trophy of the save in a game that kind of summed up FIFA 21 for me so far. Do you remember before we got into the game, I said that I need to experiment with the sliders on a PS5? This game is proof that I definitely need to do that. Liverpool 61% possession, 94% pass accuracy, but only took two shots. Both of them fell on target. Both of them found the back of the net. You know, it's just typical, really, isn't it? But 4-2 to final score. Him and Ez with the hat-trick. He would, of course, be my man of the match. No doubt about that. But what a fantastic, fantastic way to end a really fun little mini-series. And I want to say a big thank you to you guys as well for watching the save as well. It was always going to be a mini-series. I always planned to do two or possibly three seasons at the very, very most. And you guys took to it right from the very first episode. I tried to keep things as realistically as possible. I think I did a really good job as well. I really, really do. I think the game play was again tough to keep realistic due to the way the EA, um, EA make FIFA games nowadays but it was t tough to do that but in terms of the transfers we made and the league positions we had and the way we played in the cups as well through both years I think it was quite realistic as well I, I really really enjoyed it and I thought I did a very good job of it too so to end the series off officially what I'm going to do is show you the individual stats of the players this season who performed well who underperformed uh, one final look at our team in the team management screen and also who won what in our second and final season of the save as well so as I go through the team with you one final time look at Connor Cody man ever present this year started all 38 of our Premier League games and helped us get almost half the amount of clean sheets that we got last year as well I talked about Cody this year he, he was like the unsung hero of this team and he was absolutely fantastic Semedo really good growing to 88 overall at the end of the save Rafa was definitely a step up from Daniel Pedenza only grew to one rating but nine goals in 31 and six assists in the Premier League as well he was really Really, really impressive coming in to replace Daniel Pedenzi dropped to the bench. Uh, Renato Sanchez, I've talked about this guy before, man. If you want a box-to-box -box midfielder in FIFA career mode, look no further than this Portuguese midfielder. He is absolutely unbelievable. Without question, so far, my favourite player I've used in uh, in FIFA 21. Uh, Ruben Neves, really good, growing to, two, uh, growing to 87 uh, overall, growing two ratings. Barkley was a pretty decent score player for us this year, coming in from Chelsea on a cut price £16 million fee. And as for, again, Daniel Pedenzi, a bit better from the bench this year, I felt than last year. Traore, though, 17 assists in 38 Premier League games. He did top the assist charts, and I'll show you that in just a moment. It's time to confirm it. And, of course, Raul Jimenez. He doesn't join Ivan Tony in the 40 club, but 31 goals in 37 Premier League games. And something you wouldn't have realised, but 15 assists as well. The Mexican was an absolute beast this year. Andre Silva as well, 12 in 19. What a goal-to-game ratio for our backup striker signed from Frankfurt in the summer window as well. So, real briefly, uh, I will show you the... Did I show you the official league table at the start of the episode? I'm pretty sure I did. But I'll show you the, uh, the top scorers and the assist and the clean sheet charts as well. Again, Jimenez wins the golden boot. Missed out on it last year to Salah by one. This year does capture it. 31 in 37 goals. Renato Sanchez, though, 19 goals in 38. Seventh place in the top scorer charts. And Rafa also got on there as well. Oh, no, he didn't. He missed out on the final day. Well, he did have nine. He was on there heading to the final day. But he got nine goals. Still quite impressive as well. 
Traore more assists than anyone else this year, and Raul Jimenez right behind with 32 assists combined. That was great. Uh, Ruben Neves got eight as well. Rafa got six himself. Sanchez also got six in the top 25 as well. That's really cool to see. And as for the clean sheets charts, uh, Allison uh, won the Golden Glove this year. Of course, last year it was Lloris, Edison, and Patricio combined together, having 19 this year. Allison, a clear winner. Patricio got 10 in 27. He pulled it round in the second half of the season, no doubt about that, after a tough first half of the season. But really, Gazaniga was our better goalkeeper this year with eight in. 11. I should have probably started him in a majority of our games. So I'm just going to quickly simulate to the end of the uh, month where we'll see the winner of the Europa League and the Champions League as well. Uh, find out who won that. Of course, last year, um, Liverpool won the domestic uh, cup double, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. I can't remember who actually won the Carabao Cup this year, so it'll be interesting to, uh, to find out together. Uh, of course, we were knocked out quite early in the competition. But yeah, let's find out now together who won the uh, the Cups, the uh, the Carabao Cup and the European Cups as well. Starting with the Carabao Cup, which was won this year by dun 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 Spurs in the final, beating Liverpool by two goals to one. Of course, we were knocked out quite early in this competition. As we know, the FA Cup was won by Wolverhampton Wanderers. You'd love to see it. Uh, the Super Cup this year was won by Real Sociedad. Oh, yeah, Sociedad beat Arsenal in the Europa League final last year. And Bayern beat, I think it was Real Madrid. I think, I can't remember. But Bayern won the Champions League last year, Sociedad won the Europa League, and they won the Super Cup, interesting enough. As for the Europa League this year, the winners were... Chelsea beating the team that knocked us out in the uh, in the uh, quarterfinals. That's a round of 16, even Borussia Mönchengladbach. and Gladbach. They knocked us out in the away goal running, of course. Chelsea won it, beating the team that beat us. And in the Champions League this year, the winners were Real Madrid beating Manchester City by two goals to nil. Very interesting indeed. Now a couple of you guys have pointed out throughout the course of the season my manager rating was incredibly low and you wondered why that was. Well it wasn't due to what happened on the pitch other than in the Europa League of course. We did fail our European objective quite disappointingly so but of course domestically we exceeded our league objective finishing in a Champions League spot and we did deliver the FA Cup as well. I, I find like the off the pitch objectives have a bit too much of an impact on your manager rating, at least that's my opinion, because football is a results business, and yes, of course, it's important to focus on youth and brand exposure and running a club financially sound as well, but really, do you, do you think the board are going to be that fussed after delivering the FA Cup and Champions League football that we didn't make a £2.7 million profit from youth player sales in two seasons? I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they should, uh, they should really care too much about that. I think it has a bit too much of an effect, really. But so regardless, it dropped to 61. Not that we really mind much. As I often say, as I often say, often say, I don't know why it just sounded like that. But as I often say, um, if you hit your league objective in FIFA career mode, normally nine times out of ten, you're going to keep your job. But so what we'll end up with then is the final uh, look at the Wolves squad then. And the team we lived to, uh, leave them with, as we know, Jean Moutinho retiring at the end of the season. So we'll quickly pop him in the reserves for Ross Barkley. And this is the team we end up with in a 5 2 3. Rafa Jimenez and Traore out front three. Sanchez and Neves our midfield duo. The back five, Johnny Dendonka, Connor Cody, Ferro, and Semedo. And Patricio would probably be moved on next season for the younger Luis Maximiano. The bench is good though. I really, really like it. There's a lot of young talent at the club as well. And again, when you look at the squad as well, realistically, this being our final uh, squad we leave them with after two seasons, I'd, I'd say it's quite realistic. You know, Renato Sanchez coming in, Rafa as well. You know, they're our two main signings of, of the series. Gazaniga is our backup. You know, Ferro is the, as the centre-back. Like Nuri returning permanently. Ross Barkley as well. And, and, and Andre Silva too. I think Andre Silva was most likely the, 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 the most unrealistic of the signings, but I still could see it happening. But the rest of them, I would say, were very realistic indeed. And I think we did a really good job at keeping this series realistic. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it as well. And again, for my final series on the PS4, a little mini save. I really, really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I felt like I took it back to the old school, my post-commentary style, and a very relaxed type of commentary. I really, really enjoyed it. But the gameplay was frustrating at times, but still at times enjoyable as well. And I had a lot of fun with this save as well. So... That's going to do it then. Uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this mini Realistic Krimo, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for the support uh, throughout this series, throughout all of my FIFA 21 content so far, and throughout all the content I've made on the PS4. But from me as a PS4 YouTuber to turning into now a PS5 YouTuber, I've had a great time in this era. Thank you so much for being with me throughout it. But now a new era begins with my next gen console. 
which I've just tapped and I'm really excited to get started with my first FIFA 21 next gen series. Hopefully, touch wood, fingers crossed, beginning tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the start of my next gen content as a new era begins very soon.